one character that really resonated with me in the film is Kamala. Uh, yeah. I really liked her. Um, I like that she's not just there to be cute or just like contrasting the power and sexiness of the male characters. And we really get a sense of her political consciousness. Um, what was it like developing her character? And what did you want her to represent in Better Must Come? Kind of set it up that she's a, not that she's more educated in terms of school smart, but but mm-hmm. she reads a lot. You know, what I mean, how yeah. she speaks. You can see that she kind of aspires to uh, speaking a kind of English that is not fully proper, that is more like proper. And mm-hmm. I think she represents us. Just for me, represents a strong black woman who was not caught up in the in the division and the um, self. Um, in you know the, the kind of self-imposed imprisonment that everyone in the community was involved in, right. um, and even though I don't make it like an explicit conversation between her and Ricky, I believe her the ease with which she crossed borders and she walked from one mm. community to the other with no fear yeah. helped to break open his consciousness and helped to speed him along in the direction of not wanting to continue to live this kind of criminal life, politically controlled criminal life, you know, so she kind of was the light in a certain way, and it's very subtle, Mm -hmm. but but that is what I wanted for her, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. You you can't see me, but I'm like nodding my head to everything you're saying. (laughs) (laughs) I'm co-signing. Good. Good. (laughs) And also, Kamala is the love interest of Ricky in the film, Um, Yeah. and Ricky is... I guess you would call him a gang leader, I, but he's really like a community leader. He's a yeah. community leader, yeah. and um, what I wanted to show that is he's he's a natural leader, first of all, uh-huh. as a human being. Because mm-hmm. even whether you're a leader of a community for the good purposes or you're a leader of a gang for the bad purposes, usually the most prolific leaders are usually have a they're quite they're very intelligent mm-hmm. and they kind of demand respect and they have some kind of compassion or people wouldn't follow them so. Right. So blindly, um, and I I wanted to show Ricky as a leader. You know, the strong man. He has a heart. You sense that he does really care about his community, and that he he will um, sacrifice for his community. What? I, I, but a lot of times, that's exactly who a politician wants to recruit mm-hmm. for their work is the person that the community is already following. I mean, you know, it wasn't like they came into communities and just made gangs. Usually it was the crew of youths that were kind of the tough guys around town already that they then empowered and gave weapons to and, you know, um, you know push to become violent for a cause. Mm. So I kind of want... And also, I know, I'm kind of, with Ricky's character, I'm at once, you know, playing into certain types of stereotypes about the alpha male Jamaican man, but at the same time trying to smash them in that Yes, he is a strong man that nobody can talk to. If you step on his foot, you might have a problem. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, he is a single father doing everything to take care of his son and change his direction, which in many ways goes anti to the mm-hmm. typical Caribbean macho um, persona, mm-hmm. you know? Right. So, so yes, as many times community leader and gang leader are one in the same. Mm-hmm.